From everything that you are seeing at the front line, do you sense that the NHS is prepared for what is obviously going to be a tricky winter, not only of nurses' industrial action, but just the sheer cold and more people falling poorly, let alone kids with strep B? Is NHS up to it? <laughs> Golly, that's a very difficult question. Uh, we're certainly feeling the effects of this uh, very early Group A strep uh, uh, condition at the moment. Uh, the peak has arrived very early. Normally, we expect it in February, but because of all the timetable and the COVID and the pandemic, uh, it's upset the timing of these things. So we're getting a, a huge surge in streptococcal infections at the moment, which is putting a lot of strain on us. Uh, and you lot in the media have really um, done a marvellous job of, of getting everybody very worried about it. So our A&E departments and our GP surgeries are filling up with thousands of worried well. Uh, but really, uh, the incidence of serious illness in this condition is, is one in 6,000. So I'd have to treat 6,000 people with penicillin to prevent one uh, serious complication of group A strep. Uh, it's, a con it's a condition that's been around for years. Uh, doctors and nurses know how to recognize it, and I can talk to you about that as well. And it, and extraordinary for modern bugs, it always gets better with a very old fashioned penicillin. So it's a very, it's a very well known and it's a very treatable condition. Uh, but the trouble is that, uh, the, it, when young children in particular, uh, it can't be confused with viral infections, which again, are, are very common at the moment. So we've got a lot of worried mothers and fathers and carers uh, of their children who are really seeking help as much as they can through. 111, their GP services. Absolutely. And, and, and tell me this, David, how are you finding it yourself at the front line? The reason I ask that is because I got a very helpful text message from my local GP surgery who are really good at communications, and they just said, look, yeah, if you want to see a GP, it really does have to be, it has to be really serious, which hopefully it always would be. And, and they were quite clear it was partly because increasing numbers of people need sick notes at this time of year because they are genuinely poorly and, 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 and cannot go to work and would lose money. Secondly, mums and dads worried about little ones with rashes and all the rest of it and fevers and yeah. so on. What are you finding it at your front line like, David? Well, it is exceptionally busy, yes. I mean... Uh... We're all working very late into the night and we're getting a lot of queries and we're seeing a lot of patients face to face because sometimes you've got a sick child with a fever uh, and it's something you can't deal with on the telephone or a video. You really do need to see them. An interesting quirk of this condition is that if you've got darker skins, you can't actually see the rash typical for scarlet fever. So you actually need to put your hand on and have a feel for that classic sandpaper feel. So yeah, there are real issues to do with access and and getting to general practitioners at the moment, that we really would not, would rather the, the worried well, so to speak, to stay away and not fill up our departments because it makes it that much more difficult to pick up the really seriously ill patients. And that's the difficulty in getting this balance right, isn't it? We're all talking about it, uh, we're all thinking about it, uh, but we're getting a lot of people who, at the first stages, you know, ring your doctor or go and see your doctor because you're worried about it and can I have some penicillin just in case? And then the pharmacy is empty of penicillin. We can't get amoxicillin syrup or penicillin syrup now. So we're asking uh, parents to crush up adult tablets to give to their children. So it's, it's, a, it's an extraordinary sort of gathering storm. And, and uh, in amongst all that are some very elderly people who so, are going to get cold this winter, who are going to get viruses, who are going to get COVID, who are going to get flu. Uh, and we've got them to worry about as well. So, yes, very exciting this winter. My old mate Chris Hobson was uh, doing media round the other day and I knew him. He used to do press and, and, and uh, media relations for Granada Television. And, of course, he, he was a, a big cheese at NHS Providers uh, and is yeah. now, I think, head of strategy at the NHS. And, intriguingly, he said the answer to where we are right now, which you just spoke so elegantly and articulately about, is not shed loads more money. It is this personnel planning document. It's about recruiting more people to sit alongside you and work with you. It's about recruiting and training more nurses, more doctors across the piece. That will solve most of the immediate problems that the NHS faces. Do you agree with that? 
well, I, 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 yes, I, without seeing the exact thing, I can't agree with everything. But yes, I think the more GPs and nurses we have on the front, the front line means the more time we can spend with patients to help prevent illness, to help people not get cancer, to not get heart disease, uh, and to watch out for dangerous signs. And that's the problem. We're, we're, we're firefighting the whole time rather than actually thinking about a proper service that provides a great uh, service for NHS, for GB UK Limited. We need a good health service so that our commercial organizations, our big companies can compete in the world uh, without having a huge population of sick people waiting to have their hips done or their knees done. The better the health service we have, the more economically uh, advantageous the UK will be on the world market. And goodness, we need that now.